Hey everybody, this is uh, Dave Lee at Grass Steampunk, HS Creates. Um, in this vlog, I'm going to show you a little bit of what we're going to do with an actual car. You see I bought a uh, 1929 Bugatti kit car that's on a 1970 Volkswagen Fastback um, chassis. And uh, yeah, but it's a... Uh, it is an absolute mess, which is why it was so daggone cheap and within my price range. And uh, today it's going to get fixed. So this is the uh, kit car. It's uh, pretty cool, but when they put it together, they did it wrong. This whole section here is, was added because the whole cabin is supposed to have been back to this point. And I assume they did it like that because it was for somebody short. Uh, are considerably shorter than me, which is understandable, but um, I can't even drive this sitting in it as it is. So, and I really dislike this <laughs> bar sticking up. That's not supposed to be there either. That just looks like, I don't know, it looks like crap. So, what I have done is uh, my friend Bruce, who builds race cars, uh, is going to help fix a lot of this stuff we're going to move this back and get rid of this section and uh, i'm going to get rid of the fenders i do not like the fenders i want to have a more of a volksrod feel about this uh, i am not going to go steampunk um, i'm just going to go for a cool roadster and uh, eventually when i can afford it i'll get rid of these wheels and i'll go with um, a brand called Smitty Smoothies, which are made in North Carolina, that just look absolutely friggin' fantastic. So I'll put a link to that in the in the comment section. So take a good look at it now, because this is the last bit that it's gonna look like this. Yeah. Uh, oh, and with this part right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it and then um, bend a piece that will follow the contour of the back end. So it'll be dropped. It's funny because the uh, the windshield that was on this is what is where I got the windshield for the Roadster. But um, I'm going to order two like that that are a little bit nicer from this uh, site my dad found. And then the inside, I've seen a bunch of Roadsters that do the plank with the aluminum like strip in between the planks and they usually do that in when they restore old pickup trucks I kind of want to do that on the floor here and uh, and then the dash I want to take out and do a real nice piece of wood and then the gauges I want to do like a, a brass piece that would be the tracing the, the gauges to kind of give them a you know make them stand out from the wood a little bit make them look nicer but uh, yeah, oh, lovely, uh, whatever kind of handle that is, and on the trunk is the same. So, anyway, more later. So, it does take me some time, but I got the front part of the body off. Uh, and the main reason for that is I want to check, I want Bruce and his skills and adult supervision for me to. You know, we're going to check all the welds and cut and re-weld whatever needs to be because they really did. Uh, I mean, I'm not a welder, but it appears to me that they did a really shitty job. Some of this stuff looks like bubble gum. I mean, like, what the hell is that? <laughs> you know, and before I take this out on the road and actually drive it like I'd like to do, I figured it was best to just kind of strip it down and see what we're working with. Volkswagen's uh, rust, there's no real chassis, it's floorboards or whatever they say, whatever the term is, uh, floor panels, I guess, and there's really not a lot to this car, and a lot of it, that is to it, just looks like crap, again, to me, that's why we have adult supervision, and, uh, that's Bruce. <laughs> So, but it's been fun learning experience for me. If you looked at the interview I did with uh, Corey Burnett, you all know that one of my goals was to learn some automotive stuff because short of changing oil, I'm pretty much an idiot. 
So, I'm learning some about old ass Vol Volkswagens. I think I'm gonna become a V-Dub fan. You know, this is a Bugatti kit car and um, it's not going to stay a Bugatti kit car because uh, it's not a Bugatti, it's a Volkswagen. So I'm kind of leaning towards more from a you know design aspect uh, of uh, the Volksrod um, stuff. So I keep going back and forth on paint jobs. Part of me says, you know, I had one idea I was toying around with of doing like silver and airbrushing around the rivets and kind of doing a World War II fighter, but that just seems kind of dumb. Not dumb, but unfitting of a Volkswagen. And I certainly don't want to do a uh, Luftwaffe theme because then everybody will think I'm some kind of alt-right Nazi or whatever. So I thought World War I plane theme, uh, doing the Red Baron, which is kind of cool. But then when I was putting the pictures up, people assumed the same thing, something to do with Nazis, yada yada. So I decided not to do any kind of airplane theme. Then I wanted to do classic roadster kind of look. I looked at some of the two-tone, uh, like black on the top, yellow on the bottom, black and red combo uh, is another option. Um, and then blacking out the uh, the rims until I can get my Smitty Smoothies. And then uh, now I'm also thinking just going just a flat satin black, not flat, but a straight satin black, um, blacking out the rims, except for like the, the chrome trim around the end. And just kind of doing that Volksrod theme. Maybe I'll get, uh, see if I can't get Aristotle Promogulus to do me a cool you know, Day's Volksrod logo for the side, or I don't know. It'd be fun once I get it running to then play around with themes. I mean, I initially did. You can see on on the uh, the top that I just pulled off. I was playing around with what silver would look like. I played around with what copper would look like because I thought, oh, maybe a copper <clears throat> um, car would look cool, but. I don't know. I'll worry about the art part later. All right, so we got it up on stands. Uh, now, what we're working on is this whole like section right here needs to go back really as far as it can, but because the starter is right there, I can only get it back maybe about six inches, which should be enough for me to still have room to. Uh, you know, drive, but, um, yeah, it just poses some interesting challenges, and, uh, luckily, Bruce is really talented at fabricating stuff, and got, has all the stuff we need, so when he gets back here, we'll take a look at it, um, and then we'll see what else we need to <clears throat> cut, and re-weld, and fix, but it should be, uh, interesting fun. I really need to figure out I need to get like a new gear shift because this is lame 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 another thing I'm doing is they had these little wings sticking out in the back like like this and <laughs> the brake lights were like from a trailer or something not really very cool retro look so I'll be cutting, getting those, getting rid of those, and uh, I'll end up putting some kind of hot rod uh, bullet looking tail lights, and those will just um, probably attach here with the turn signal to the to the back of the the boat tail. And I'm gonna cut these off because I do not want fenders on this, and I want to be able to go to a bigger size tire eventually. Uh, so I need to get rid of those. Plus, they're on, you know, pretty crappy. All right, as you can see, that whole section has been cut out. Uh, Got to clean it up a little bit. I also cut out those shitty uh, fender brackets. <laughs> Although 
<laughs> you can see they just like welded the snot out of like a just giant chunk of metal there. Yeah. So I'll try to clean that up as much as I can. And uh, and then here, the next thing is uh, is to move this whole section here back. The debate is, do we go back to the starter um, with a notch cut out so that you can still get the starter out if you have to swap it, or do we go above? And um, I'm leaving that up <laughs> to the advice of Bruce because I don't have a clue. But we're much, much further. And really, it's kind of disturbing to see how little is on a Volkswagen frame. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be all fine. Maybe that's why they only have 1600 cc motors. All right, <clears throat> to the end of the end of the first day. This is what she looks like. A lot of cutting and grinding to get where we're at now. But now we're uh, Bruce is going to weld a piece. It goes back, kind of boxes this part in, and so it lets me move the seat from where the back of the seat was here, and now it'll be as far back as the, the starter, which gives me an extra six inches of leg room, and uh, yeah, which should be enough. Kind of hope so. There's a lot of work to get to this way, but yeah, it's a lot of. Uh, a lot of work so far. Unfortunately, Bruce has got a bunch of other stuff to do race-wise, so I think what I'm gonna do next is um, I'm gonna re remove this and replace it, or use it as a template for uh, a nice wood cutout. I kinda like the instrument panel the way it is, although I would, it seems like the, like the speedometer should be in the center or something, but like maybe the speedometer should go here but uh, yeah, we'll see. But I want to do that, and then however I come up with the instrument panel, I'll do like a brass piece that, that's cut out to make it look a little snazzier. Yeah, I'm starting to look like a chimney sweep or something. <laughs> I think it's time to go home, clean up, go home, and 